Welcome to your 2018 StarCraft launch. It is a 19 BHS from StarCraft Outfitter. The BHS in that model number stands for bunkhouse, so there are two bunks inside. So let's just talk about some of the outdoor features real quick. Um, we do have some cargo doors that are all keyed to the same key, same key as everyone has in the campground. It also has an electric awning that'll come out and is operated from inside. You don't want that awning to come out during high winds. If you suspect there's gonna be high winds or if it starts to get really windy, you're gonna to wanna to pull that sucker in. Otherwise, it could rip right off the side of the camper and you don't want that to occur. Um, as far as the door goes, you can see that there are two keyholes. The top keyhole actually locks this function or this lever right here, the latch. And the bottom one is the deadbolt. Please only use the deadbolt if you use the top one. The key may or may not work. We have found that from day one of having this particular camper. We have a nice handhold to get in and out of the camper. Love that feature. Here we have the exhaust for the furnace. If you're going to be using the furnace, make sure that there is nothing in front of that blocking the exhaust because it could melt or cause carbon monoxide buildup inside the camper. We also have your standard outlet right here. Those outlets work great. If you're using a toaster or an electric skillet, only use one at a time. Otherwise it'll trip the circuit, could trip the circuit in the camper, or it could trip the circuit in the campground on your uh, electrical post. Here we have a dual axle, they are brake operated via your truck a couple things to keep in mind is the age of the tires these tires are currently about five years old you don't want to run too much longer than that between five and eight years is the lifespan of tires these ones look pretty good never had any problems you want to make sure that they are inflated to i think and you know, i'll have to double check but i believe it's 55 pounds of pressure for each of the tires you want to make sure that those are inflated to 55 pounds each time you go out. Otherwise, that increases your chance of a blowout under inflated tires. Looking here at the rear of the camper, this is where your license plate's going to go. I left those screws in there for you. Also, you have an or a propane connector. If you have an outdoor grill, that is a propane grill. You can connect it to that. I've never actually used that. The back bumper actually holds your sewer line so that it's a nice clean way to carry your sewer hose without having to worry about it messing up the inside of the camper. You don't really have to do anything as far as the slide goes, as far as maintenance goes. It stays pretty well lubed. You just want to make sure that you're always checking the seals, the seals on top, and the seals around the back, which I've recently resealed. All right, also located on the camper on all four corners are some stabilizing jacks. Those stabilizing jacks are not for leveling your camper. Otherwise, you can bend them like there is one bent on the other side. But they are only there to, to help reduce the bounce inside the camper. And what I have found extremely helpful in regards to up lowering and raising them is a bit on a cordless drill. So this bit I'm gonna go ahead and send along with the camper for you guys. And you simply have to have your drill in reverse. And sometimes they get a little stuck so you may wanna break that seal with a, with a wrench first. But once you have it in place, it goes pretty quick. You can see my camper is raised up really far so it never actually reached the ground. Sometimes I like to use some wooden blocks underneath. Gets it up there nice and tight. And again, those are only for stabilizing, not for leveling your camper. You want to level with your left to right with some blocks, maybe some pieces of wood if you are on an on-level site. And from front to back, you're gonna use the tongue jack. The tongue jack is hand-operated. You could replace it with an electric one. 
we have never done that. Also on the front, you can see your 20 pound propane tank. It is held on by a screw and a little nut. And there's an on and off for the battery. Now you should check the battery water levels about once a year. Um, they have not been checked yet this year, so that might be a good idea to do. Also, while we're out here on the front, we have one of the features that I want to point out to you is a brake breakaway. So if the camper, for whatever reason, becomes uncoupled from your towing vehicle, and this is attached to your towing vehicle, it's going to pull out this pin right here. And when that pulls out, it'll activate the brakes on the camper. And so the battery will need to be connected while you're traveling. Otherwise, it might not stop. And again, we have a 2 and 5 16, 5 16 inch ball that we use. Make sure everything is locked into place when you are traveling and you have a pin through here. Um, one of the other things that I would say is yes, you certainly can operate this without a weight distribution hitch, but I would highly recommend using a weight distribution hitch because that makes things much more smooth and it feels a lot safer with that in place. It also provides some sway control. All right, on the other side of the camper, this is where all the good stuff happens. We have another cargo door. This is a through and through, so it goes through to the other side. We have an outdoor shower. It has hot and cold water. Um, here we have our electrical currently. Since it is connected to the shore right now, we are currently charging the battery. We have our cable TV. It says output. That's not really output. That should be input. Um, city water. If you connect to city water, if you go to a full hookup site, it would probably be best to have a pressure regulator on your hose so that you don't blow the water lines out inside. And right here, this is your fresh water fill. You simply drop a hose in there and you fill it up. We usually filter the water as it's coming from the campground hose. And inside, we're going to go ahead and give you one of those filters that you can use. And then once it's full, you're good to go. Also on the outside here, you can see that there is a low point drain when you're leaving the campground and you don't want to carry that extra weight. And I'm not sure if this is open or closed right now. I think it's open. I think it's closed. I don't know. Um, if water comes out, then it's open. If water doesn't, then it's closed. That's to drain out the excess water. Also back here, we have the cover for our water heater. We'll open that up. You're going to make sure there's no spider webs in there. So you're going to want to vacuum out if you do see spider webs. This was replaced within the first year. This little circuit board was replaced within the first year of us owning it uh, because it was just a bad circuit board. Um, you can see the hole right here. Um, that goes to your water heater with the drain plug. You want to make sure that you drain your water heater after every use. Um, otherwise, water can sit in there and bacteria, flora, whatever starts to develop in your water, your hot water might start to stink and you don't want that. If that does occur, then you're going to want to fill your hot water tank with a peroxide solution, which kills that flora and bacteria. And of course, when you winterize, Every winter you want to take that plug out because if water freezes in there, you could actually break your hot water tank. And replacing that hot water tank could be a big pain in the end. I would always make sure to check your window seals. Make sure that they're sealed up pretty good. Um, right here, here, and here... These are access points to your refrigerator. There's a little drip drain hose for your refrigerator on the back side here. Um, your refrigerator is powered with either a 12 volt or electric hookup, I mean, not 12 volt, or gas. And when it's powered by gas, it'll still cool. Right here is the 
clean clean out for your black tank. Um, that'll help clean the crud out of your black tank. But when you do that, make sure that your black tank valve is open and you're connected to a, a sewer or uh, some sort of uh, sewage collector. Also important to note that if you are ever camping where the at a full hookup site, keep that black tank closed. If it is open, the solids tend to build up inside and could clog up your whole system. And you don't want that. You want, only want to open that when you're ready to empty it. Now, as far as the roof goes, the rule of thumb, at least what the RV places say, is you should be checking your roof every 90 days. Um, checking your roof, checking all your seals on your roof every 90 days, because as soon as you have a, a breach of any sort, whether it be a crack in some sealant or a hole in your roof, then water damage can occur quite, quite readily. Um, one more thing about the front, now that we're over here again, when you're traveling, that foot on the jack does not go up very far. So we've always traveled with that foot off. We've taken it off and put it, put it in one of the side cubbies just for safety. All right, so let's go ahead and travel inside the camper. Currently the lights are off. I'll go ahead and power those on. There we go. Right here we have our furnace on and off. It's a hard click to turn it over to the on position. Right now it's in the off and we have a temperature setting down here. And it, it tends to do all right. I will point out the upper bunk. The upper bunk has no electrical outlets. And what we've done, because the lower bunk does actually have an outlet back there. Where is it at? There it is, back there in the corner. We've run an extension cord or a surge protector along the, the side of the bed here and up to the bunk above because, you know, kids love their electronics. And then access to that cargo area, which you have access to outside as well, is right here. Which is handy if you lock yourself out and you can send a small child through that to, to unlock the camper. So let's talk about these features right here. As soon as you walk into the camper, you see there are a couple features right here. There are some on and off switches. Right now, this switch operates your ceiling lights which your ceiling lights also have a push button right there in the middle to turn them on and off. This switch right here is for your exterior light. There are some LEDs running right along the underside of the awning, a nice blue light, not too obtrusive, it's really nice. This is your water pump button. As soon as your water tanks are full, you're gonna flip that on. As soon as your water heater is properly connected and properly filled, you can turn that on and it only runs on gas. Doesn't take too long to heat up, doesn't really use too much gas. This is your button to extend and retract the awning. And this is the switch to extend or pull in the slide, which is the master bed. And in addition to that, you have some buttons here. They don't really look like buttons, they're just little blank spaces. You can see the levels of all your items, the level of your battery. Right now it's at two thirds full, but we're currently charging it. Your level of your fresh tank, which is empty. The black tank, which is your sewer tank, connected only to the toilet is empty. And the gray water tank, which runs from your sinks and your shower. All right, here is your stove, your cooktop, which we use maybe one time, your microwave, which tends to get more use than anything, and then your hood. Your hood does have a light on it, and it works pretty nice. It also has a pretty loud fan, which also works nice. That fan is what's connected to the outside, so you wanna make sure that outdoor flap is open when you're running it, especially if you're cooking or boiling anything here. You want all that steam to go outside because campers love to collect moisture and you don't want moisture in your camper. That's your worst enemy. Now let's talk about faucets a second. Right now this faucet's in the off position 
it's it's not too bad. This faucet was actually a replacement faucet because um, I did not winterize right away one year, and what happened was water froze in there and ended up breaking the whole bottom of the faucet. Um, so that was replaced underneath. There is some storage, but it's also access to your pipes and how you would replace that faucet back there. And we have a little bit of storage space down there. Really not much can fit down there. Maybe a toaster, maybe a couple rolls of paper towel, your little knickknacks. Here is the outlet to your furnace to heat your, to heat your RV when those colder times. But like I mentioned before, it's nice to use that. It uses a lot of gas. If you're only going for a weekend, that's okay. But I would use a space heater along with that to help reduce your gas usage. So on the opposite side of our stove and our, our furnace, we have our refrigerator. It's made by Dometic. It's a pretty popular brand as far as RVs go. And there's a couple buttons up here at the top. There's the on and off button. And then there's the auto and gas button. If you are traveling and you want to keep your food cold while you're driving and your gas is on, shh, um, you want this button up so it's out. And when it's out, you're going to hear it click, 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 click. And if there's not enough gas in the line yet, because sometimes maybe you just turned your gas on, this check light is going to come on. When that check light comes on, that means it's not working. So what you're going to just do, you're going to turn it off, turn it off gas, and then turn it back on. And hopefully it'll light. You may have to actually run gas through the gas burners over here on the cooktop. And I will tell you that to light these gas burners, it's old school, so I would use one of those extended lighters and so you can light your flames. But once gas is in the system, it should work. The refrigerator should work. You can see that whenever we store the refrigerator, we prop the door open so it doesn't get moldy, mildewy, or stinky. Um, that's just a good rule of thumb. Whenever we're not using it, the refrigerator is open and up here you have your freezer area same thing with the freezer we prop the freezer open with a piece of paper towel so that there is airflow inside of that down below your refrigerator is some of your control panels down here well we'll talk about that that is your carbon monoxide protector those are very important because car campers can collect carbon monoxide if you're not using them properly or if the furnace gets gets clogged. And then um, that goes off, you wanna make sure you exit the camper. And in this panel right here, you simply push the button and it pops open. Here are your circuit breakers. Typically what you want is to have all of these off. You want to have them off as you're traveling and before you hook up to a power source. Um, because who knows what kind of power voltage or power jumps you might get from that power source. So once you plug in and everything is okay outside, then you can flip those on. And of course, you're going to hear this fan running. When this fan's running, it's simply to cool it down a little bit. Because what this also does is it also charges your battery. And you can see right here, all the fuses. So this is your, again, this is your power converter also. So it'll charge the battery that is on the front of the camper. All right, one additional feature, I'm not gonna actually uh, pull, th pull this apart, but underneath this long bench seat is access to one of your big storage areas. Um, I'll just lift it up briefly. You can see that there's a, there's a finger hole right there. So you can take both of these covers off, open a, that up, Take that cover off and you have access to the same storage area that is outside of your camper. All right, so a couple of additional features here. We, here we have a radio which does have a remote. And this radio does open up to provide access for a, there it is, for a DVD and a CD. So and it also operates your radio, so you press this button up here to access your CD DVD area 
to play music, you can turn it on. There we go, right now it's muted. And then you can change your, your channels and whatnot. I'll see if I can't find some directions there for this thing. But typically, oh, there it is. Typically, it just stays on and muted. Um, and here are the connectors to that. If you had uh, a TV that you wanted to hook up, you can connect right to that. Set the TV up here or, or on the table down there. You see there's a cushion on the table right now. Up here, there's an outlet for a TV. Sometimes we would use an electric kettle up here. Um, really, that's the only thing we've used that outlet for. And in addition, there is a satellite connector up here and a connector for the TV. The TV, we typically use an antenna, but in the antenna that's right up on top. And you want that power button so that there is power to the antenna. Otherwise, you can leave that off. Now I do wanna jump back over here to the slide out a second. So when you're sliding in and out on that slide out, it's natural for it to make some clicking noises once it goes fully extended. When you hear that click, it's fully extended and same for when you're bringing it in. Make sure you pull that table in when you're sliding it in and there's nothing in the way of it because that could definitely damage it. And so once it's fully in, you're gonna see that you don't have any floor space on, over here anymore, but there's lots of room to slide containers or tubs or, or whatnot, things that you can store while you're traveling. Of course, the table is in its up position right now. Those table legs do come out and we like to let them sit right down there. You can see the little scuff marks underneath there, or you can put them in one of the cargo areas. All right, and here's what that table looks like all folded down. There is an electrical outlet underneath the table, which we have found handy, because it's right over here, is to run an extension cord up along our bed if we were charging our devices up there and wanted access to charging or keeping our computers or laptops plugged in. So underneath these benches, underneath the left bench here, we have a couple access points. This first access point is really just a storage area. Keep games, fans, whatever you want in there. And underneath this other access point is your water heater. And you definitely want access to your water heater, especially when you go to use your camper. Currently it is in winterized mode. So that means there is nothing in the water heater. There is no winterizer in there. You don't want winterizer or sanitizer to go in there. So currently this valve is closed. The bottom valve down here is also closed. That means nothing goes in or out of the water heater. And there is a bypass valve. Let's see if we can see it down here. There is a bypass valve right here that is currently open. So that means water can go in, down, and around without ever coming into the water heater itself. So as long as these things are perpendicular to the line, that means they're closed. If they are parallel with the line or in line with the line, that means they are open. So currently, this is not usable unless this is moved in line, the bottom one is moved in line, and this one right here is closed. We've run into the problem when we've left this one open before and we had kind of like lukewarm water. So that didn't really work well for us. So again, this is in winterized mode. When you're winterizing and sanitizing, you don't want bleach or the RV antifreeze to go into the hot water tank. Okay, under the other side, on this side again, we have some ample storage space. We always like to keep odds and ends in there and sometimes they can get packed pretty full. But underneath this other seat, that's where the money happens. You have your water pump. You have your, this hose right here is to um, winterize your camper. Right now, like I said, it is in winterize mode. You can see that this valve is open. I'm gonna go ahead and close it right now for you. I'm gonna close that up. And 
this one, this valve right here, we can go ahead and open up. So that is now in the open position. And really, that's all you need. That's all you need to do to unwinterize your camper. You would fill your tank with fresh water from the outside. And here's, here's the outside hose that comes in and goes right into your freshwater tank down there. And once your freshwater tank has 30 gallons of water in it, turn the pump on and start running that antifreeze, which is pink, out of your lines. That antifreeze is non-toxic. However, every season I would sanitize. You should sanitize with a quarter cup of bleach solution to every 15 gallons of water. So this holds a little over, I think 30, a little over 30 gallons of water. So you'd need about a half a cup of bleach. Fill up your tank with water, run it through all the faucets until you smell bleach out of your hot and cold valves. Once you do, you let it sit for three, four hours and then I would run it a little bit more because that's what I do. Then I would go on the outside and open up the drain valve at the rear of the camper, which I pointed out earlier, and drain all the water out, shut your pump off. And another thing you can do is there's two little things down here. These are your low point drains. Let's see if we can see that. Um, you want them to face, I think, with the line, and then they just pull up. Same with this one, you just pull it up and it'll drain those low point. It drains all the liquid out of your lines. And then you will close those after you've sanitized. And you're probably gonna run a one, want to run water through it a few more times to get rid of that bleach smell. If you're not finding you're getting rid of the bleachy smell, then one thing you can do one thing that you could do is run, I think about a cup of vinegar along with the uh, full tank of water and that'll help eliminate that. But we've never really had an issue with eliminating that bleach, that bleach odor. Again, winterizing is pretty simple. You close off your hot water tank so it loops around, the water will loop around. You close this valve right here that goes down into your fresh water tank and you open up this valve, which is connected to this hose. And you put that hose in your RV antifreeze mix that you can get at any hardware store for really cheap. And you run it through all your lines until they're pink. And that's about it. I hope you enjoy this camper as much as we have. One last and final note, probably need to replace the batteries and the smoke detectors. When you're camping, you wanna keep your vents open a little bit because moisture builds up and it gets a little uncomfortable. Here is a fan, it has a reverse and forward and it has a light. And there are several ways you can attach it. You can attach it right there or there's also attachments on the other side. So you can have it pointed down and it simply plugs in up here. And when you pull in your slide, make sure that's unplugged. And here are a couple more goodies for you. Here's some uh, toilet drop-ins. You only want to drop one in those. It's just like a porta potty, I guess you can call it that. We have an RV sewer hose kit for you. A water filter kit. Make sure you run water through it before you actually uh, put it into your camper. We attach this at all the campgrounds when we put water in, depending on what kind of water we have or they have. And we have a couple of uh, carpeted steps that you guys can install on fresh. And I hope you guys enjoy your camping adventures. If you have any questions, please reach out to Betsy or myself and we'll see what we can do. And hopefully, hopefully we can answer any of your questions.